friends. Hey, good morning everybody. Today is not a sunny day, but it is a bright and cheerful day because Miss Evelyn is here. Miss Evelyn is always smiling. Miss Evelyn right now might not be smiling so much because you're tired, aren't you? <laughs> My bones hurt. <laughs> Evelyn is in the middle of another remodel. And this is one of those remodels, if you wanted to learn about remodeling, it is bare to the bone and it is down to the bone. Y'all are taking this house down to the studs, mm -hmm. yeah, the floors, the floor joists. Yeah. Y'all are really getting it done. Yeah. And well, the good thing is only like one room that we have to replace the joists. I thought it was more than that, but we were able to remove some of the sub floors to look under and, and it you looks went, pretty yeah. dirty. Yay. <laughs> she yeah, sent me like, pictures and yeah. she was like doing this happy dance and she's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, look, look, only one room is so bad. bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, this is a little house that you bought in White, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And so I've been advising you to mm -hmm. Fix and sell, fix and sell, fix and sell. But in the middle of fixing and selling, the interest rates went up yesterday. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. scary. That is very, very scary because yeah. it changes the market. It only went up 1%, but yeah. it changes the market. Mm -hmm. And we know that. Payments too. And it, yeah. it takes some people out of the buying process. Now this is the home in White, Georgia. And it started, how, about how many square feet is this little house? It's only 958, so it's like a thousand square feet. It's mm -hmm. pretty small, but it's a three bedrooms, one bath. Um, the rooms are not really small, they're good sized rooms. And it's on two acres. It's on 2.3 acres, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a really pretty. And you were tempted to keep it, but yes. your friend said, <laughs> sell while the selling is good, because I'm we don't say, know how burn it down. <laughs> Look at poor yeah. Scotty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he would is, light it up a, ma a match. <laughs> yeah. He is the master of disaster. So. <laughs> yeah. It is a very small house, but it's on a beautiful lot. Uh, and again, 2.3 acres. You could have a garden. You could add a garage out back. You could have a workshop. You know, 2.3 acres is a lot it's of land. Pretty big, yeah. You yeah. see, it didn't look that bad when we bought it. No. And the hardwood floors are all good except mm -hmm. one room. Yeah, so that room behind that wall was bad. Mm hmm That too. <laughs> yes, yes. And it's one of those things that will you change and make another half bath because y'all are famous for doing that. Yeah. Will you do that? I think so. I mean, we're still trying to see where we're going to put that because also the hookups for the washer and dryer were in the kitchen. So mm -hmm. we have two things now, like, to find a new place for the washer and dryer and also a possibly half bath. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. I think yeah, the half bath would be pretty important to mm -hmm. me because you just, oh, yes, even, yeah, it is. even yeah. if you do a powder room off the kitchen or somewhere, yeah. you know, maybe the laundry area and the um, powder room off the kitchen somehow together because mm -hmm. you, it's important if you have, if you have three bedrooms, if you have two kids, if you have whatever, you, yeah, that yeah. half bath make, means a lot. So. Yeah. So now when you start this project, this one is going to be in your spare time because you do <laughs> yeah, other things. Yeah. So this project may take a while, but um, yeah. when we go back to all the projects y'all have done, the one in Ackworth is just fantastic. Yeah. It just turned out great. And it was closing it was. on that next week. Are we closing next, next Tuesday? Week? Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. And the one yeah. on Ball Ground Highway, the, the people who moved in there love it. Oh, yes. Yeah. They love it. That and was a cute house. Too. That was a like cute house. small, but a cute. It, it, it is in a high density traffic area and it didn't even bother the buyers. Mm -mm. They just said, we're in ball ground and yeah. we're out of the city and that's all that mattered. Yeah. And, the guy and I used think, to, uh, well, he used to live in Roswell and he said the traffic is horrible. So he <laughs> said this commute because he works in Alpharetta. So he said, this commute is gonna be so easy. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you, you wanna say. do it, we want you to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we're about to list six acres over at the Dawson near the Cherokee County line. Mm -hmm. And it has 300 feet of creek frontage. And one of, the, one of the first things people say when they call our office is I'm looking for about five acres and a creek. Well, we're about to have it. We're going to have a little over six acres and a creek, and it has yeah. a beautiful building site on it. And it is one of those things, it's a rare find, mm -hmm. but at the same time, some people are afraid of building right now mm -hmm. because of the cost of building. Is Scotty seeing that the material is still very expensive? Um, 
Just slightly, though. Not a lot. Not last year. I mean, it was crazy, mm -hmm. with, especially mm -hmm. with the uh, um, what is it called? The stuff that you use for the subfloors. Uh, plywood. 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 Plywood was like plywood. ridiculous expensive, but I think I mean you can still see a little, you know, price mm -hmm. difference, but not a lot. I right. mean, it's it's not right. bad. Well, and, and the fact that LVP flooring is mm -hmm. the thing now. Oh, yeah. And that Area. is a manufactured flooring, so mm -hmm. we're not depending on trees for that. Mm -hmm. exactly. We're depending on, is it made of a rubber compost? Is that what it is? Because it lasts know. forever. It's, yeah, I don't know what that, they use, but that thing is like scratch resistant, water resistant. Animal resistant. Animal <laughs> resistant, like yeah. fire resistant. No, I'm not kidding. No. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so it, and it looks good. It looks great. It looks good. I mean, yeah. they have so many shades, colors, yeah. textures, and yeah. so it looks really good. I went in Miss Deborah's house the other day and I just looked down, the first thing I saw was her floors and I said, oh my gosh, I love your floors, <laughs> I love your floors. And they were totally different than anything I had seen, but they mm -hmm. were LVP and yeah. she said they're to, you know, because she has two little dogs, mm -hmm. two yapping little cry baby dogs, I might say, but they're so cute. But um, it was, it's beautiful. Yeah. And A lot of people are using it more now because before, you know, when you say vinyl floor, you're like, ew. Yeah. You know, like that's yeah. cheap. Yeah. yeah. But LVP is also vinyl floor, but it's called luxury vinyl plant. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Yeah. So it adds it's a little luxury. To yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now, the cost of restoring, like the house in South Carolina, we've made a decision to mm -hmm. restore the hardwood floors because they're floors absolutely good, yeah. beautiful. They're mm -hmm. beautiful floors, but they have some dog stains on them where dogs might have visited. So, I had an example, and Ryan Williams is the guy in Pickens County who did this job. This house had like six dogs in it, and, and the floors looked horrible, but Ryan did a great, great job with it. and. I wasn't sure that they would even come back as good as I had hoped, and they came out fantastic. So when do you make a decision that you cover hardwood floors or you refinish them? Does Scotty like to refinish them, or is he pretty much away from that? Well, you see, the house in ball ground, the one that we saw, it has some hardwood floors. Mm -hmm. So they have carpet on the top, and they glued the carpet. I saw that. And they stapled the carpet. I saw that. <laughs> and they yes. did everything with the carpet. So yeah. Uh, when the carpet was remo completely removed, you have glue. Obviously, when you sand the floors, you can remove that glue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the problem was that some of the uh, um, some of the uh, hardwood floors were like damaged, like mm -hmm. damaged, damaged. Mm -hmm. To like you know, you can put a little bit of mud in, like the wood mud, and then sand it down. But that was like bad. Yeah. And it was around. Sometimes it's not worth yeah, it. Yeah, and it was around the uh, the vents. Mm -hmm. So it was like, mm, not no. worth it. Yeah, yeah. it's not yeah. worth it. So, and that's a shame because hardwood floors mm -hmm. should last forever if you take care yeah. of them. Yeah, so, exactly. And used to, everybody did. And most people went away from carpet mm -hmm. and went to hardwood because of allergies. Mm -hmm. Because I know I. I love hardwood floors. Yeah, yeah, me I love too. Hardwood that's floors. that's the yeah. thing. Now, out of all the houses y'all have done, the house in Rome did it have hardwood floors? Yes. Yes. Beautiful so, hardwood floors. Oh, beautiful, floors. Yes. 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 And that one did not have any, I mean, it was scratch. You have scratches here and yeah. there, but I mean, that. It was amazing. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, yeah so if so. you have hardwood floors and they've been covered with carpet, mm -hmm. it's really cool to pull up a corner. The, the thing that makes realtors <laughs> really smile is when you walk in to list an older house and you pull back the carpet and you see these beautiful hardwood floors yeah. that you can save. Yeah. That is really, really cool. So. Yeah. I love that, and um, I know a house that you've looked at recently um, has some hardwood floors in it, and um, some in different rooms, and then some has vinyl on it, some has different stuff, but it's really cool anytime you can preserve that hardwood. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, it's just, even if you do one or two rooms, and then you do something else with the other rooms. Yes. Maintain it if you can, yeah, yeah for sure. And then it saves you money. <laughs> it saves you money. Now, last night we attended a meeting in Ball Ground, yes. and, um, I was a little bit disappointed that more people weren't there because I think I they got mislead that they thought it was at the county at the city hall. I don't know. It it there were like four or five people from Sage Hill. Mm -hmm. um, I saw a couple. I mean, several from our neighborhood because mm -hmm. you know we're not really affected by it, but we really mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. because when you put 800 tractor and trailers oh, yeah. a day, that's traffic for everybody. Yeah, that's traffic for everybody. <laughs> And when they got to the count, I think it was 2,290 vehicles a day this factory is going to add. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's going to add jobs. It's going to add bring money tax to the dollars. County, yeah. It's going to bring tax dollars. 
So it had the good, the bad, and the ugly. And the good that came out of this meeting is our mayor um, talked to someone and they said they could put up a red light at Airport Road and Highway 5, so which good. is desperately, desperately needed. And because we shipped out the LAT sportswear factory there for years and years and years, if you pull out there and you try to turn left going toward ball ground on 05, you got traffic coming in both directions and everybody's going <laughs> you too have to fast. Play for your life. Yeah, yeah. And so I asked the question, I said, have any of y'all ever pulled mm -hmm. out of that intersection yeah. in a tractor and trailer? And they said no. And I said, Well, buddy, you but ought try to try it. it. Yeah, <laughs> y'all try, try it. it. <laughs> but but they they can't they can get a red light there. And I think that is a drastic that's a deal maker. Yeah. Because once I heard that, then I wasn't so well, negative. Well the good the good thing about it too, that they were not like aggravated with the feedback you mm -mm, know they were mm -mm. listening and they were like yeah and yeah, taking suggestions it's possible yeah yeah, yeah. you yeah. know they weren't like oh no we cannot do yeah. that so they were like one of the questions that I loved and this was a gentleman who asked numerous he asked a lot of <laughs> questions but he lives very very near this plant and he was talking about the dumpsters coming in at mm -hmm. night and the noise and the backup trucks mm -hmm. Because you know every truck in America today, when it backs up, beep beep beep, yeah, and we, exactly. you know, we, we all know that. <laughs> yeah, we, we all know, know that, that sound. sound. <laughs> and whether it be the guy emptying the dumpster at two o'clock in the morning or it, it whatever, you know that a sound. Bus, a bus. A the bus. bus. <laughs> yeah. You live yeah. near the bus, didn't you? <laughs> I hear that. No, I haven't heard it in a while, but I, I used to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so. five o'clock. <laughs> Time to get up. Five fifteen. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. But uh, but everybody knows that backup sound, and that was one of his questions. And so they asked him, they said, would you put a sound barrier? And mm -hmm. so somebody said, well, plant a lot of Leland Cypress. Well, Leland Cypress are great for a visual barrier, yeah. but they don't stop the sound. No. <laughs> you know, they don't stop the sound. So, so I think it will probably get passed. I'm not sure how the city council will vote. But I think listening to those guys last night, I think they're on board. Positive, yeah. yeah, they're I on board think, yeah. to do whatever the city wants them to do. I think. Yeah. So I think it, you know, I think it's going to be okay. I did want to hear the number of jobs because, as I understand, the company does pay very, very well. Mm -hmm. But he couldn't give us a number on jobs. Is it going to be? But it's going to be three shifts, 365 days a year. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be <laughs> open. It's going to be open and running, three 24/7. shifts. Twenty-four seven. Yeah. Twenty-four yeah. seven. So. Yeah. So that does make a difference with the neighbors and, and two of the people who live right there at Sharp Mountain Creek, they were very, very concerned. Mm -hmm. And um, I would be too if I lived right there at it. And so it's it's gonna be interesting, but mm -hmm. I, I I came away in a very positive, you know, mm -hmm. positive feel yeah. for it. So I hope everybody will, I think there is gonna be another meeting. I'm yeah. not sure, did you know when? I don't know, but yeah, they say there was gonna be another yeah. one. Yeah, before they vote on it. So, but mm -hmm. I, I think the council felt pretty positive with it, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Okay. We have a dear friend um, who has had her second chemo treatment. She is going to have a third chemo treatment, and um, Selena's still strong. She's still positive. She's still focused on recovery. And so today, I want to honor Angel Spirit. And um, today, as always, Dawn keeps buying me these cute little books that I love. This is February the seventeenth. This is this is something that I think just we all need to hear. Often we don't recognize the unforgiveness that is in us. We think we are forgiving, but we really aren't. If we don't ask God to reveal our unforgiveness to us, we may never get free of the paralyzing grip it has on our lives. A big part of making sure our lives are clean and right before God has to do with forgiving other people. We can never move into all God has for us unless we do. And that, again, Dawn, Dawn keeps buying me these things. I don't know where she finds them, but she always comes and says, Mama, I've got you something else you need to read. So, <laughs> so there you go. And um, to everybody who is battling cancer today, we, we want to say we support you. We pray for you. We, we hope that everybody is beating it. And when you think about Selena, she was young. She was crazy active. She was living her life, and then she got this diagnosis. But... The diagnosis has not stopped her from living her life. And so today I want you to say a special prayer for her. She will be having her third chemo treatment in the near future. And um, I remember that third one was pretty tough. So I hope that uh, everything will go well for her. We're going to play a little bit of Angel Spirit. And, um, you know, remember these ladies. Diane has gone on to be with the Lord. 
and Leah is, uh, was standing in for them that day because Mildred was having breathing problems and it was just a really, really good night and we were raising money for our friend Hans Rufert who at that time was in MD Anderson Hospital battling cancer and the doctors had said you have a 1% survival rate. Okay. He has been here 15 years. So guys, that is just, and this was the night we called it a friend raiser and we raised money, we sold his t-shirts, we sold his cookbooks and we supported our friend and that's what we do. When you get a cancer diagnosis, you gather those people around you who love you and they help support you and, you and support because support during this time is very, very important. So here we go to some music by Angel Spirit. The only thing I got to say about that, thank you so much, but Scott was talking about you just have to do what the Lord bids you to do, and I wouldn't want to be around you if you didn't. I ain't one bit ashamed of a tear. Jesus wept, you know that? Yeah. It's good for you. down here with cares of this life, sorrows often overtake us, and my burden with strife, but some happy morning, when we get up there, we'll have
thing. Yeah, y'all go ahead and stand. Okay, we're back. Now, today, I've been thinking. I've been thinking about a lot of people. And I've been thinking about two people that I love a whole, whole lot. I love Ron and Shirley Singleton. And um, they've been a lot to me as friends. They have been a lot to me as supporters. They have been a lot to me as viewers. And I met them because their precious child was killed by a drunk driver. And um, I don't think anything ever shook my world quite like that. I never got to meet Brady in person, but I have met him just like you have on videos. We did a very, very special piece several years ago, and um, I try to share that with people because I want you to know, go to the lake and have a good time with your friends, but don't drink and drive. Go to a, a concert tonight and have a few beers, but don't drink and drive. Have go, you know, go. do whatever you do that makes you happy, but don't drink and drive. And when you look at Brady's story, um, August the 29th is the, uh, August the 29th, um, April the 29th is the day, it's Dale Earnhardt's birthday, it's my grandmother's birthday, and it was the day for Brady. And um, it is a day that I will not forget. My grandmother was a very, very special part of my life. Dale Earnhardt was a big part of my life. And Brady Singleton was never in my life, but he became a very big part of my life because I want to share that you can enjoy life and you don't have to drink and drive and so we're going to share this. Evelyn's never seen this before. And um, I think there are people out there who maybe as we go into spring break is coming up, the winter break is next week, and then there'll be spring break in Daytona, and then there'll be Summertime. partying, and everybody goes, and, and everybody drinks, and a lot of people drink and drive. And I want you to watch this, and then I want you to save this, and I want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And every time you see somebody drinking and driving, you send them this video of Brady Singleton and what his life was like. Today he would be 17 years old. Think about that. This little boy was three years and nine months old when people who chose to drink and drive, and they drank all day long. And then they hit Brady and his grandfather. His grandfather did survive. It was a rough, rough survival, but he did make it. And um, the idea that his little grandson didn't, and if they had just stopped and lifted the four-wheeler off Brady and gotten him out of the creek, he had not one scratch on him. So the decision was made to flee the scene rather than stop and render aid. That's the horrific thing about this. The accident was bad enough, but the idea that they didn't they even left. stop and render aid. So. Please pray for the Singletons because as we approach that anniversary date every single year, it, it doesn't get any better. And I can tell you as a mom who lost and buried a child, it doesn't get any better. So sit back now. You're going to hear some great music. You're going to hear an original song by Jennifer Danner. She did this song in honor and in memory of Brady. She actually personally knew him. I did never get to meet him, but I feel like I know him personally too. So here we go to the Brady Singleton tribute. Today is six uh eight, six eight. <laughs> my, my goodness, just look at that. My goodness. Want it off? My goodness. Gonna get it off. There's Freddie's brand new tractor. Right. Today is September 16, oh 2007. Yes, wow. <laughs> Three-year-old Brady getting his first tractor. Let me set you on now. Don't, don't put your foot on that right there for a minute until I show you what to do. All right. Now then, let me get him up there. Now then. Now then. Now then. Whoa. Oh. It's 
It seems like yesterday we joined hands to pray how sweet it would be if we were standing round when this cold grave it turns to resurrection ground resurrection ground no more graves <laughs> it's a big horse, isn't it? When Jesus will be for all eternity, this is not the end. It's resurrection ground, resurrection ground. No more graves allowed. We'll meet them in the end. This is not the end, it's resurrection ground. This is not the end, it's resurrection ground. You know, I thank the Lord for songs with meaning. That's why I love singing with the inspirations, because we have a message, not just music. Back in 1992, my brother and his wife had to go through the deepest valley they'd ever been through and ever will go through. They had a little three-year-old girl that one week she was playing in my backyard with my little three-year-old girl. And just the following week, we had no idea that she'd be rushed to the hospital. Just as normal as any child playing in my backyard one week, the next week rushed into the emergency room, two days later going through a major brain surgery, having a tumor. Through complications and different things that took place, the Lord saw fit to take little Marie Beth Dibler home. Just a matter of weeks, just a matter of days. Do you know, a couple days later, we had to go out to the graveyard and see a little white 48-inch casket. Some of you have been there. We had to watch that casket go down under the ground, and I thought, what could I say to my brother? I wanted to be an encouragement to him. 
But although I didn't have the words to say, I'm glad that God still gives a song in the darkest night. We want you to listen to this last verse again because this is the song in his darkest night that God gave my brother the day, the very day that he buried his friend. <laughs> oh, buddy. We come here often where our loved ones lay. It seems like yesterday we joined hands to pray. How sweet it would be if we were standing round when this cold grave it turns to resurrection ground. Resurrection ground. No more graves allowed. We'll meet them in the This is not the end, it's resurrection ground. This is not the end, it's resurrection ground. Ready for Kong. King Kong. Ah. Wow. That was good. More? What? Yes. Wow. How about yes. those big dinosaurs that are in Kong? Dinosaur? Uh, oh, wow. that was scary. Golly, that was scary. I'm okay. going to see another dinosaur. Yeah. All right. Let's dinosaur. See Whoa, Ooh. that was so scary. And King Kong. Sometimes life is hard to run. How a light just keeps on burning while another candle ends And how a smile can change it all I remember And how there's hope after a fall now and ever I see him smiling there and you see him everywhere I can almost hear him now singing Jesus loves me, this I know His eye is on the sparrow And Jesus loves me, Mommy And Daddy, you know that One day we'll laugh and play like Yesterday and now And Jesus loves me, this I know I'll see you on the morrow. When darkness settles across the sky, the bright and morning star will still shine bright. And he holds him in his arms of love. Aside from up above, the storms or weather, you see him smiling there. You see him everywhere, and I can almost hear him now I'm singing. And Jesus loves me, this I know. His eye is on the sparrow, and Jesus loves me, mommy. Daddy, you know that One day we'll laugh and play like Yesterday and now And Jesus loves me, this I know I'll see you on the morrow I'll see you on the morrow Me, this I know I'll see you on the morrow. 
Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella J, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you paid attention to it. I hope that you will share that. If you know anybody who drinks and drives, please, please share that with them. Please let them know that um, if you decide to drink and drive, it could change your life forever. I also wanna read something. This is, this is from our friend, Sheena Elliott. And um, Sheena is Dan's daughter and she has been with us many, many times. She was here. We all dressed in pink one day to support Angela as she came back from having cancer surgery. And I was reading today, this is, this is what Sheena put. Um, good morning and happy Thursday. This is lengthy, but worth a few minutes of your time. Have an amazing day. Sometimes trading grief for victory means choosing to see what is instead of being blinded by what isn't. It's a tough choice in some moments, brutal actually, but it's a battle that is worth fighting. We don't have to let what breaks our hearts destroy our lives. This breaking of you will be the making of you. A new you, a stronger you, strengthened not with the pride of perfection, but with the sweet grace of one who knows an intimate closeness with our Lord. He draws you near despite the sharp evidence of your grieving heart, the anger, the deep disappointment, and the disillusionment, the questions of why you and why now, the comparisons that will make you feel as though God loves other people more, the crying and the banging your fist on the steering wheel, the shame and the anguish, all of these are shards of being shattered, but God isn't afraid of your sharp edges. They may seem quite risky to others. He doesn't pull back, he pulls you close. His love and grace cover your, your exposed grief and step by step, he leads you to a new place of victory. Today is part of that process. And that goes out to sweet Angel Hyde, who is dealing with losing the love of her life this week. And to Jean and Carolyn, I know that y'all are struggling and I can tell you the struggle will go on, but we have to um, understand his perfect plan. And Evelyn is facing an anniversary right now of 20 years that you had to face a plan that you didn't ever want to see. Mm -mm. Your father yeah. was brutally murdered and the person who murdered him really didn't pay the price, did they? Mm -hmm. No, they didn't found they didn't found enough um, proof that he was the one paying this guy to kill my dad. And that is crazy. That mm -hmm. is so crazy that you he basically got away with murder. Mm -hmm. 
And um, your father was a very productive human being, a lot like you, um, very caring like you, and his life was snuffed out because of somebody else's violence and, and, and just, it's crazy, it's yeah. crazy. But to see that they didn't pay the price, that has to be hard. I kind of like found out about, I mean, it's been 20 years now, but maybe five years ago that uh, he has terminal cancer. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So God does have a perfect plan, doesn't mm -hmm. he? Wow. What about yeah. that? Well, your your dad um, was a supporter and a helper of the community. He was. And, <laughs> and that's how he was murdered, because yeah. he was helping somebody in the community. Yeah. And, and that, you know, you, you look and say, okay, God, my dad was a good person and I lost why him. Why was he taken? Yeah, yeah, why was he taken? Why was he taken? Yeah. And, and he was, but your daddy's in heaven. Yeah. So, yeah. and you'll see him again one day. Yeah, so, yeah you know, I always think about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. And, and don't you know that he's watching you and he's saying, that's my girl and I'm so proud yeah, of her. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when you do something really cool, you can go, I'm daddy's girl. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, do, yeah. yeah. It, it is hard. It is hard to accept. Um, somebody asked me the other day, they said, when does it get better? And I said, I it don't know, I'm not there yet. It doesn't. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's like a constantly, you're okay with your life, and then you think about it, and then you miss that person. You're okay with that, but you know, with the fact that the person is not longer in your life, but you still kind of like, why? Mm -hmm. You, you mm -hmm. question yourself, why? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't get better. It's just like you, you learn to live with it mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it still hurts oh yeah yeah it still hurts, it still hurts. Yeah. It still hurts. now you had said something about you wanted to do a 20-year celebration in honor of your father's life yeah so how would you honor him what would you do to honor your daddy i don't know we um his 10 year me and my brothers we all got together and we we did it all separately like we donated stuff because my dad was like so given and Many years ago, when I was still a kid, you know, we will go to like uh, nursery homes where they were they were not private nursery homes. They were like, you know, the government, state, the government, yeah, and yeah. those people were like basically there by themselves, right, with barely nothing. anything. Yeah. And I remember being in this big long room with 20, 30 beds, and these people were like just laying there, and we will bring snacks, we will bring drinks, and little gift for them to open for Mother's and Father's Day. Mm -hmm. And I used to be so mad. <laughs> Every time my dad was like, all right, we're going. I was like, why? You know, like I was so mad all the time because it was two hours ride to get mm -hmm. there. And by just being there and to all these people like give you a hug and say thank you, it was very rewarding. So mm -hmm. we did that for a while. So on his honor, on his 10 year anniversary, we donated about 20 backpacks and to churches and stuff like food to pantries and mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. stuff like that. We didn't do nothing crazy. It was just basically donation related. And mm -hmm. so, you know, we continue with what he was, he liked to do. He liked right. to give, he liked to donate, he liked to help others. And, and uh, you know, he was pretty successful, but he was very poor too when mm -hmm. growing up. Mm -hmm. And so him, Back to his, when he was a kid, his dad passed away. My grandfather passed away. He was a pilot and his airplane just exploded wow. and they never found his body. So my grandmother uh, put my, my dad in orphan place because wow. she couldn't support him. And I didn't like my grandmother for a while. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so he, he stayed in that place for a long time until he was old enough to work. And then she went and got him out. Oh no. So he knew about, you know, what being in those kind of places is, you know, not having mm -hmm. food, sleeping with, you know, 20 people in the same place. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he was always thinking about helping others because he faced that. Right. You know, right. and uh, but even though after like, I remember like years after that in, I don't know, it was some kind of celebration we have at home. And I was so mad at my grandmother and I was like, yeah, I started yelling at her and I was like, you left my dad there. And she was like, my dad was like, stop, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, and I was like, no, yeah. See, today is that, perfect because he, yeah, but I was he, like, he forgave, left you there. He yeah. forgave when oh, you Oh yeah, he was, he has couldn't. like a yeah. great heart. Like yeah. I was like, yeah, my parents left me there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, so, um, so it's, I think that's why he, he, 
he liked to help others because he was there before. He mm -hmm. didn't have anything. He was poor, and he made him, you know, he worked his way up mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. very successful and have mm -hmm. a good job. And he was constantly on the go, helping, doing this, doing that. Mm -hmm. I don't even know. I think he has like three different jobs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it Did was you always ever like forgive your grandmother. I don't think so. Like yeah. I never liked her, and yeah. I don't know. It was kind of weird because. Um, and maybe she had a choice. He wouldn't have anything to eat if he stayed with her, and maybe yeah. she thought it would be better. I don't if know. He were I mean, I don't know what there. I mean, I, you can never say what guess. their situation yeah. was, yeah. obviously. Yeah. But I thought that day that we were all in family. I thought to brought it up and. She was all like offended, obviously, but I was like, "Well, somebody need to tell you that." <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, you and, did and it. that's yeah. like something that my dad used to be like that too. Like he always teaches to taught us to like if you wanted to ask for something, don't just do it. Mm -hmm. The answer is kind of a yes or no, and mm -hmm. then you will know. Mm -hmm. You will not just die to knowing like, oh, I should have asked. Mm -hmm. No, it's mm -hmm. why I don't like that. Like I, if I have to say something, I say it. If mm -hmm. I have to ask for something. I ask, and mm -hmm. you have to, you see me, you know, when I go to stores and stuff, and I'm like, hey, can you get me this down, please? I am not climbing there. <laughs> and Scotty always tells me, so why do you sell like that? Like, because okay. you need to ask people, you know, like, I cannot reach. <laughs> so but, you are um, truly a product of your daddy. Yeah. 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 For yeah. Out, of, out of all my brothers and sisters, I think I'm like the most close to how my dad's personality and, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, on the 20th, are y'all going to get together, or are you going to do things separately? We, no, we we were just talking about it, and we decided to, they're all going to come to Georgia, because uh, my brothers and sisters, they live in, uh, in Florida, and so they're not far anyway, so we haven't decided exactly what we're going to do, because it's in October, mm -hmm. and it's a little cold still, so I don't know. My brother was saying to go to Peru, but I'm like... The situation with COVID in Peru is really bad. It's really restricted right now. You mm -hmm. cannot go anywhere without having your vaccination card. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't let you go on restaurants at anything, and mm -hmm. then they have so restricted hours. In that kind of so situation. we were like, no, yeah. maybe no, not. No. So I don't know. We haven't figured it out exactly what we're gonna do, but we're gonna do something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In honor of him, yeah. maybe you could plant a tree at yeah. the garden mm -hmm. club in Balgram. Yeah. In honor of your daddy, and it would grow, and you would be able to watch it because yeah, you my live right too. by the park. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So yeah. I think that would be a good idea. Yeah. The bells of all round are going to be mm -hmm. on on March the 16th, and we're going to be talking about the Garden Club and the fact that you could be a member of the Ball Round Garden Club. You're I joining, know. and they're so happy to have you because yeah, you're young and you work hard. I know. I was <laughs> they like, were what like, am we're I doing? so excited <laughs> to have Evelyn because yeah. Evelyn works like a man. I know. <laughs> so. I was raking and raking, and then the next day I was like, oh my God, my body. Her. I yeah. know they told me you're young, but I was like, I look younger, not that old, not, you know, not that young yet. Yeah, yeah, but it was fun. Well, you know, when, when we look at our lives, our life when we leave here is going to be a reflection of what did we do for others while we were here. Mm -hmm. And your dad was a perfect example, mm -hmm. even though he was young. How old was he when he was murdered? Uh, he was about to be retired in the following year. I think he was like 60. Yeah, and his yeah, 60, close yeah, to, yeah. Yeah, and so he had he had worked all of his life and he had given mm -hmm. and given and given and now you got to see what he did and what he gave and you can continue mm -hmm. that legacy and I think it's important that you do and yeah. I think Jenny Byers, you just pick out a tree. And, yeah. <laughs> and you know happen. the crazy thing is like when I was pregnant with Kayla and uh, I have talked to my dad that week saying that, you know, oh, I cannot find out what she is the following week. And then my dad was like, oh, I know, I know, I know, I'm going to tell you. And I was like, no, don't tell me. He said, I had a dream with this, like, like cute little girl with curly hair. It's going to be a girl. <laughs> and sure enough, Kayla has curly hair. Yes, yes. she's really cute. Yeah, she's really cute. And then <laughs> so, she's sweet. Yeah. So, yeah. So when yeah. I went to the doctor the week after, my dad was already dead. And mm. I told the doctor, I said, I don't want to know. And she was like, are you sure? And then I started crying and I was like, yeah, I want to know. Yeah. So and then yeah. she told me it's a girl. So I was like. Yeah, your daddy yeah. knew. Yeah, yeah, he knew, he knew, he knew. Well, he knew that you would be a good mom and that you would raise your children right and that you are following in his path. And mm -hmm. I think that's very important that you do that. And you teach your kids that, yeah. you know. 
Yeah. And sometimes kids don't understand why you're giving and why you're doing and why you're wasting your time on somebody mm -hmm. else. But it's like this book. I don't think that Kenny had any idea the impact it was going to make on me because um, it it taught me that yeah you're having a rough day and yeah things aren't like you want them to be but you're Some not taking care it, yeah. of a paraplegic spouse Person, that is yeah. is in her last days you know and it just so I hope y'all will pick up a copy of this book and again he told you how to find it it's Culture Jock and uh, it's a good read and it's um, it's amazing to me that he was sitting here smiling and doing all he did and his, his first reaction was the minute we came off the air, he said, I, I hate to run, but I need to get home to Kay. And I just said, wow, that is his life. That is his life. So we're going to end today with a photo of us wearing pink many years ago, a throwback Thursday, as Angela came back from having cancer surgery. She had stage three cancer. They did get all her cancer. They had to do another surgery, and she had some problems but she got through the cancer. Sadly, she did not get through the depression um, and she ended her life. That is our support of any and everyone who is battling cancer, has beaten cancer, and God bless every single one of you facing chemo this week. We're gonna leave now with Angel Spirit as they do another song. You know, there will never be another Angel Spirit concert because Diane has gone on to be with the Lord. Mildred's facing some problems with her health. And Selena is going to be recovering from cancer. Let's just declare it and let's just say it's going to happen. But um, we have these DVDs and I'm going to share them with you as often as we can because this was a night that these ladies, everybody on stage, gave their time and gave their energy to support our friend Hans Ruford. Continue to pray for everybody who has beaten and battled cancer because we do know that often it is reoccurring. So say a prayer for them. And here we go to Angel Spirit. Ever. <laughs> so y'all enjoy. I know your life on earth was troubled, and only you could know the pain. You weren't afraid to face the devil. You're no stranger to the rain. So go rest high on that mountain. Sun, your work on earth is done. Go to heaven and shout love for the fall. Oh, how we cried the day you left us. We gathered round your grave to grieve. I wish I could see the angels' faces when they hear your sweet voice sing. So go rest high on that mountain, sun, your work on earth is done. Go to heaven and shout love for the Father and the Son. So go to heaven. Love for the Father and the Son. See what I mean, guys? She got it. She I don't got know that. if I like this or not. That makes me the oldest one up here now. <laughs> oh, well. This next song is going to feature her just a little bit, and we hope you enjoyed it. It's a good old Southern Gospel hymnal out of our book, and it's called Holy Angels. Just a uh... 
Thank God. Give her up.